take action or to simply let it be? Are you wondering how you can correct a wrong first impression? Well, so was one of my subscribers, Itala, when she sent in this very question. And another subscriber, Kim, asked too. Can you redeem yourself after making a bad first impression? So I thought this was an answer I should share not only with Itala and Kim, but with all of you. Hi, my name is Silvia Di Giusto. I'm a keynote speaker and author. But one of the best parts of my job is being able to connect with professionals like yourself to assist you in your personal and professional growth. As leaders and as entrepreneurs, the way we represent ourselves to those around us sets the tone for our success throughout our careers. If you are watching this video on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button and also on the tiny bell to be notified about new content. And regardless of how you have found me, let's keep in touch. Also be sure to stick around until the end of this video to find out how you can receive 130 free tips and tricks on impressing others from the very first moment. Which brings us back to the question. If you make a bad, a wrong first impression, do you have a second chance? Simply put, Yes, of course you do. You have endless second chances that are yours for the taking. The catch here, however, is every second chance you get makes it more and more challenging to change people's perception of you because their brains and subconscious minds are secretly working against you. I hate to break it to you, but while we love to think that the majority of our decisions are based on rational thinking, they actually are backed by our unconscious biases. So what are unconscious biases? Our unconscious biases are our learned stereotypes that are deeply ingrained into our minds. These are unintentional and can influence our thoughts and behavior without our active involvement. Let's think of some examples that can happen. Maybe it's a job interview, meeting with a team member, or an important sales pitch for a new client. After the encounter, you realize you were totally underdressed, behaved unprofessionally, or said something inappropriate at the beginning of a conversation. Or you just didn't feel like you have represented yourself well. Now you are left feeling like you have made a bad first impression and wonder if there is a second chance for you. First, it's important for you to reflect on what went wrong in your encounter and who was impacted by the supposedly wrong first impression you made. Two options here. Maybe you felt you could have shown up in a more confident, more approachable, more creative, more funny, more professional way, simply in a different way. You just weren't able to imprint on others how you would like to be perceived. Then this is all about you. And if it's just about you, take the time to hone in on your ideal appearance, behavior and communication methods in your first encounters and simply try to do a better job next time and next time and next time and next time as it will take long until you have a better chance to imprint exactly what you want on others. If on the other hand, this encounter not only impacted you, but also others, because you made them feel awkward or them feel uncomfortable, things are a little bit different. Depending on what happened and how much this wrong encounter might impact your reputation or long-term career success, you might even want to consider apologizing. If so, I recommend you watch another video on my channel with some guidance on how to act in this case and apologize the right way at work. In any case, when it comes to second chances and fixing your first impression, you are battling the unconscious bias about yourself in the minds of those around you. And the longer and the more often you battle them, the harder they will be to change. For example, confirmation bias. 
works against you by causing their brains to search for confirmation and proof that their first initial opinion about you must be right, while ignoring anything which speaks against their opinion. This makes it impossible for them to see you in a positive light. For example, if a client's first impression of you is that you are lazy, they will find ways to confirm this assessment, whether it is in your visual appearance, your behavior, or the way you communicate with them. The brain wants to be right and will focus on that which makes it right to them. Additionally, anchoring bias will make sure that all they can focus on is just that one trait, whether it's laziness or something else. The brain will anchor on that one piece of information, make it difficult to get past. This can continue to be fueled by their personal affinity bias, for example. If they personally despise laziness or whatever trait they have tackled on you, this will continue to grow their aversion of you. This comes down to the simple fact that we tend to gravitate towards people who are more similar to us, not our opposites. Another bias that can work against you is conformity bias. If others have also made the assumption that you are lazy, this affirms the client's belief about you. If others are right about your laziness, why wouldn't the client also want to be right in believing you are actually lazy? This can lead to the bandwagon effect, which is the tendency to believe things simply on the grounds that other people believe them too. I could go on and on about the biases that can pile on and work against you with continued negative first impressions. And while this can feel really hopeless, Remember that you can use this to your advantage. If you would like to be perceived as hardworking, as creative, as approachable, or whatever trait you want to be known for, if you deliver hints of these traits during the first micro moments of your encounters, the unconscious biases in others will help to shape and mold the perception you want others to have of you. With a little bit of first impression planning, you can avoid relying on a second or third chance altogether. Download my free 130 ways to make a powerful first impression ebook and you can sculpt your first impression in a way that closes deals and promotes success. Finally, always remember that your first impression is just the beginning. And while it is the impression that determines the relationship and outcome of the encounter, it is just a starting place. You make millions more impressions after the first, and all of those play a part in evolving the way others perceive you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any other important questions being answered.